Zack Snyder, when you hear that name, it probably does one of two things to you. It either fills you with an immense amount of rage to the point that you have to go rant about it on the internet, or it makes your eyes glaze over and you start salivating in anticipation for the amount of slow-mo porn you're about to get in whatever you're watching. Or maybe, and I'm just throwing this out there, you feel completely neutral when you hear that a new Zack Snyder film is coming out. That's the way I feel. I have liked some of his films, some of them I don't like, but I, I do think he gets a little more hate than he deserves. I've been a bit of a Zack Snyder defender. I thought Army of the Dead was fine. I thought Batman v Superman was fine. They're not good films. They're not terrible films. They fall somewhere in the middle. Hell, even Sucker Punch, I think it's a little more hate than it deserves. Again, not a good film, but you can at least see some degree of competent ideas in there, even if they're not executed very well, because Snyder is totally full of himself and decides to write his own films instead of just sit in the director's chair where he belongs. Point is, I've defended him a lot in the past. When Rebel Moon Part 1 came out in December, I just, I got to the point where I couldn't defend this crap anymore. There's not enough redeeming qualities. However, I like original sci-fi, and I was willing to give part two a shot when it came out this weekend. And I don't know how he's managed to do this, but he took the few redeeming qualities in part one that I liked, dismantled them, and gave us one of the worst payoff films I could have possibly imagined. So this film picks up right where part one left off. We have this group of like seven or eight characters that have been assembled from various different planets and worlds. They're all gathering on this village in Velt to fight back against the mother world because they're gonna come back and seek revenge, but also they wanna take all of their wheat, which is such a stupid reason for them to be coming back. I'm not opposed to the idea of the oppressed fighting back against their oppressors, that's basically the bare bones themes of Star Wars and Dune and pretty much every other space opera that's ever existed. But let me get this straight. These mother world dreadnoughts that are flying around through space, wreaking havoc, establishing their world order are so desperate for food that they absolutely need the wheat production from this tiny village on a small planet in the middle of nowhere. I just don't buy that. It's absolute BS. Now it would be one thing if they just wanted it and take it from these people because they can, not because they necessarily need it. But no, it's established in this film that the villagers are going to use the wheat as their bargaining chip so that the Empire or the Mother World, whatever the fuck they're called, they don't just blow this place to smithereens from orbit because they could easily do that. That's another thing that's tough to buy. I could rant about a lot of things in this movie, but the fact that they've assembled this small group of characters who are so outnumbered and outgunned by this much stronger force and it just doesn't feel like it's that much of a challenge for them to take them on. I'm gonna to try to keep this relatively spoiler free, but quite frankly, there's not too much to spoil in this film. It's relatively simple, straightforward, and anticlimactic as fuck. Part one was not a good film, but what it had going for it is that it was world building. We were exploring other planets, other regions of this universe that exists in Zack Snyder's vision. And that's what's interesting to me about sci-fi operas and space epics, is exploring the world and seeing what the director envisions is out there. The entirety of part two is set on Velt in this farming village. You don't see any other locations aside from a couple of spaceships and through some flashbacks and visions we see other locations. But other than that, it's all set in this one location. And it just, it totally takes away the sense of scope that part one at least tried to establish. Another job that part one had, but it didn't really fulfill, is that it was supposed to develop these characters so that in part two, we could have this big climax and we would actually care about the characters and want to see them succeed. And it did not accomplish that at all. For one thing, I couldn't remember half these people's names when this film started. Thankfully, they do a little bit of a recap, courtesy of Anthony Hopkins as the robot. But you can tell Snyder knew he failed the assignment in part one because the entire first 45 minutes of this film is dedicated to the characters sitting down together and explaining their backstories to one another. That is such a lazy and contrived way to get us to care about characters and to give us depth because for one thing, they all have the exact same backstory. With slight variations, they all lost something or someone to the mother world and they want revenge. To give due credit, I think the character I was most invested in was Jaman Hansu's character, Titus, because at least he had some thematic elements going for him in that he once surrendered to the mother world in an attempt to be a martyr for his people and he lost everything for it. So now he's no longer interested in surrendering no matter the consequences. There's a spark of something interesting there, but every single other character has virtually the identical backstory with just a few variations. The acting is quite good. Sophia Butella as Korra is quite good. 
but it's such a bland character they have here that even when they give her complicated backstory with the politics that existed in this world back when she was working with the mother world, I just fail to understand how Snyder squanders all of this potential so easily and so recklessly. So that's what the first 45 minutes of this film is. It's doing, or at least attempting to do, what part one should have done, getting us invested in these characters. It fails in both instances. And then you would think you get the battle, but no, after that you get another 30 minutes. This time it's a montage of them gathering all of their wheat so that they can compile it together and hide behind it and use it as a shield. Oh my god, I know I've criticized Zack Snyder before for overusing slow motion, but I shit you not, there are slow motion sequences in this film of them harvesting wheat. Why? Just why? I've never been more tempted to hit the fast forward button, but I have too much integrity for that, Zach. I'm gonna sit through your bullshit, even if I'm absolutely bored shitless. Then you get the final 40 minutes, which is the big climactic battle sequence. And it has some visually entertaining stuff going on for sure. And I think Snyder actually tones down the slow-mo in the battles from the last movie, which I appreciate, because not every shot has to be slow-mo. That just ruins the fun of slow motion in and of itself. But despite all the visual noise going on, again, you just don't care. You don't care about anything that's happening. You've completely lost the scope of the world that this is taking place in. The villains are utter morons. They land on this planet and walk out in front of this army on Velt as if they're not going to fight back. So when it happens, I'm just, I'm baffled by how idiotic these characters are. Mild spoilers ahead, some of the characters do bite it, and it's once again just impossible to care. And once all is said and done, they shoehorn in a setup for more stories in this universe that completely convolutes what we've learned before about this princess who was supposedly killed in a political coup in the past that Sofia Boutella's character was a part of. Ultimately, I'm just baffled by how little I cared, by how checked out I was by about the 15 minute mark. Even when the action sequences did pick up, I, I wouldn't say I was really entertained, more so just, I sat there with no expression on my face. That, that's how I'll put it. I'm so frustrated. Even Anthony Hopkins' character, the robot, he showed some potential in part one. I thought he was gonna have a bigger story role in part two. He doesn't. He steps in and gets in on the action a little bit later in the film, but it doesn't feel earned because there's no character arc that led to that. He spends half the rest of the movie claiming that there's no way they can win, they're outnumbered and outgunned, and all of a sudden he becomes this deus ex machina who steps in and is just mowing down enemies. What a waste of a great cast, what a waste of some decent visuals that plugged into a better story could have maybe been something fun. At this point I know his ego is getting a little too big, but Zack Snyder if you're out there, dude, you know how to generate cool visuals. Just step back from a story perspective, let someone else write your films, and do what you do best, man. I'm gonna give Rebel Moon Part Two, The Scar Giver, one and a half stars. There, of course, have been worse films this year. This is not Madam Web level of incompetency, but it comes close for something that holds this much potential. Let's try to leave this video on a more positive note. Hit that like button and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And while you're at it, drop down into the comments and let me know what your favorite Zack Snyder film is. At least we can try to scavenge some positivity out of what is clearly a career in decline, at least critically speaking. If this makes enough money, I'm sure Zack will bring us plenty more. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.